uh, now we are going to look, uh, jump into this boring theory. Why I call this is a boring theory? Um, this is really the theory behind these uh, microcontrollers. This is the core theory. So you can also go through these, uh, these slides by yourself. It's more than 100 slides. So you can read by yourself and understand. And as I said, like yeah, I am also going to explain uh, these topics later on separately one by one. So that is also okay, but uh, you better also go through this theory. Now, over this theory, I will go a little faster. Yeah, these are the topics we are going to see now. The cortex overview, and then we will see CMSIS means what, and what, what is the use of this standard. It's an international standard. And what is the specific architecture of STM32? That is the system architecture. And we will see what are the peripherals, or first of all, what does it mean? And what are the different peripherals available in STM32? And we will see how it uh, performs low power operation. And we will see some safety features. And we will also see little detail about flash module. And what are the, after we complete all these seven topics, then we will finally see development tools and installation. So what tools you can, you, you can use uh, to develop uh, this microcontroller programming and you can use it for some applications. Uh, then we will just move on. Cortex overview. Let's start now. X. Uh, yes, just uh, as I said, like uh, they have always uh, next generation ARM processor. Same like the Microsoft or same like Intel. They are always uh, producing new version, upgraded one. And of course, it consists of uh, classical CPU. That is the ALU and the other basic components and then the other system peripherals. So that is the uh, property of microcontroller. And this, they introduced three different series. The first one is called A series, R series and M series. A is for complex applications and operating system. It can work together with the operating system. Then you have to go for this advanced one. And you can go for this RC rise that is for real time systems. For example, if you want to uh, use the microcontroller in your microwave oven or washing machine or some other kind of industrial robots, you can go with this uh, real time systems or uh, sorry, RC rise core. Or you can go with the MC rise core. So, MC rise it's optimized for cost, especially for uh, developers and beginners. and also it's useful for power sensitive applications or power, sens power sensitive systems. And they have also different performance levels in the core. So they have 15 different performance levels from zero to 15, uh, sorry, zero to 14. So here Cortex-X is X means you can change into any number, Cortex 1, 2, 3, and so on. So Cortex X is a series of ARM cores optimized for power efficiency and deterministic operation. It's widely used in microcontrollers, yes. And they are selling, this is the core uh, they are selling. And for example, uh, the one we are going to look at is 32 bits uh, microcontroller or 32 bit microcontroller. It's a risk based architecture, reduced instruction set computer. And it has 16 registers. You can see here 16 registers R0 to R15. And it has three stages pipeline with branch prediction. Three stages pipeline means so it can process. Uh, may, it can handle many processes in parallel and each one has three stages and it has the load and store architecture uh, here uh, in these registers registers are important because when you process the data you are temporarily storing the data into these registers register means it's, it's also kind of memory but um, it's for different purpose so in the last three registers, you can see R13, R14, and R15. So this is for stack register or pointer. So in your in the programming, you will also use the pointer. Uh, 
if you already learned about C and C++, I think you know about pointers and class and function recall, function call, and so on, function return, and so on. So, uh, so for those data can be handled by SP, and we also have the link register, and we have the program counter or PC. So these are the, some important terms. Please try to remember. For example, PC is also one of the important term. We will, uh, you may use that later on. And we also have these other 32 bits uh, registers. And here we have from zero to 32. Uh, so here we have this, generally it's called the XPSR. PSR means program status register. For example, uh, when you do the, uh, when the microcontroller is executing the main program, for example, this is the microcontroller, it's executing the main program. Suddenly some interrupts comes. So maybe uh, you want, you are giving some, uh, uh, maybe let's say uh, ADC request. You need to convert some real time signal immediately. So what the microcontroller will do, this is the uh, main program and this is the interrupt. So interrupt means what? Uh, it's, it means it's a disturbance. So you are disturbing this main program. So you are asking this microcontroller, I need to uh, execute this request immediately. It has the high priority. So you are asking here, then micro, what the microcontroller will do? Microcontroller will immediately halt or immediately stop executing this main program and it will take over this ADC and it, it, will, exe it will execute this uh, ADC interrupt request. And then after completing this request, then it will come back to this main program again. Then it will come to the main program. So this is the interrupt process. And here is again the main program process. So here uh, we always need the program status. So what is going on in the microcontroller? So that kind of information will be stored in this PSR or that kind of processes are supported by this PSR. Program status register. Uh, SP, we have already saw that. I think stack pointer, uh, we can call either SR stack register or SP uh, stack pointer. So here also you have to know a few more terms. That is uh, ICI. Uh, that it means uh, interrupt continuable instructions. And also we have ISR. So ISR means interrupt service routine. So all these things are helping to handle these kind of processes in the microcontroller. Because microcontroller, once it starts the execution, it's going to be complex and it's going to be fast. Uh, sometimes we need to give priority to some interrupts. So at the time, how we are going to halt or stop the main one and how we are going to handle the interrupt and come back to the main. Memory mapping. So memory map shows which, what is included in each memory region. So there are so many memory region. So first one is the vendor specific. And then we have the private peripheral bus. So that can further classify into here four types. So it contains this much of information. Uh, room table, external PBB, ETM, and so on. So you don't need to really remember these things. If you look at the reference manual, you will find all these informations. So this is just for an overview. And similarly, we have this private peripheral bus internal. It has these modules or it supports these modules. And <laughs> NVIC is the priority interrupt. And here also, these are our different type of, type of memory uh, map, mapping method or memory regions. So here you can just read this one. The memory mapping shown is a subset of all regions that are exposed at a hardware level. And it shows, because we are talking about the microcontroller, it's a hardware. It shows the default configuration but the customer may choose a different mapping to take advantage of other address ranges defined in STM32 reference manual. So it's, uh, does it make sense for you? 
so we have already default settings so these registers are allotted for these functions uh, so each register is allotted for these functions but it's it doesn't need to be like that so if you look at the reference manual they had given what are the possibilities you can also reprogram those registers and uh, use it for some other purpose customizing so you can customize uh, the microcontroller according to uh, what you want aside from decoding uh, which memory block or device is accessed the memory map also defines uh, the memory attributes like is, is it a bufferable or catchable executable shareable so these all are properties of memories so when you process the data in the microcontroller of course you have a memory and uh, here you have the alu part and here you have the memory so and you have the registers sometimes you need to buffer the data for example the alu is quite busy it's processing the data a lot of data already it's there in the internal registers so it, it has, but still the data is keep coming inside to this uh, ALU unit so it cannot handle such a data and store it temporarily so it has to buffer somewhere and then it will take the data after process this one it just give the output result and then it will take the buffered data and sometimes it will store in the cache memory and it is these are executable here and if it needs this net data need to be shared to some other uh, modules inside then also it needs to uh, be shared so everything is like these are memory properties so but these things also you can define to some extent you know uh, when we talk about this we can we, we have to also remember dma direct memory access that's why we have direct memory access sometimes this uh, cpu or alu is very very busy uh, so but we also need the data uh, from other memories so instead of using using cpu resource we can also directly access the data from this rom or ram memory part or from different memory regions so that is the direct memory access